I've actually received quite a large volume of questions from people specifically asking me what to do with pine pollen and how to use it and how to take it because, you know, as far as the powder is concerned, a lot of people just throw it into smoothies and things like that, but they don't really know what else to do with it. And also with the tincture, I've had a lot of people asking me, you know, how, how do I take it? Is, can I just swallow it? You know, so uh, this video is really not going to be going into any of the specific kind of health benefits of pine pollen or any of the nutritive or medicinal values of it, because I already covered a really good kind of foundational basis for all of that in a previous video which I'll give a link to in the description box. Uh, pine pollen really does have a vast, vast array of nutritive and tonic medicinal benefits so uh, I'm probably going to be talking a bit about some of those individually in future videos because pine pollen really is one of the most complete superfoods, wild superfoods on the planet and it really has become one of my closest herbal allies. So really, you know, this video is just to clear up a little bit of confusion and hopefully, you know, portray pine pollen in a bit more of a user-friendly light and just to kind of clear up some of the questions I've been asked and show you some of the ways that I actually include pine pollen into my daily life. So generally speaking, when you're going to buy some pine pollen, uh, you're either going to get it as a powder or as a tincture. Now some people do little tablets, um, they're less common. Uh, I haven't even tried them myself personally, but I think it's quite self-explanatory what you do with tablets. You know, you just put them in your mouth, chew them up and swallow them. So really, what is, you know, what, what you're going to be getting hold of most of the time if you're buying pine pollen is either going to be the powder, like this, or you're going to be getting hold of the tincture. Now, they are quite different, you know, you'd want to use them for somewhat different reasons. The powder is really just an excellent nutritive superfood and an adaptogen that really has a very, very mild hormonal component to it. So, you know, in reality, it's okay to be consumed in, you know, near enough any dose for men, women, children, People of any age really isn't an issue. The tincture is quite a bit different because the tincture has much more of a pronounced um, hormonal impact in the sense that it really elevates the androgenic hormones quite significantly and very quickly. So if that's something that you really don't want to do, then you know you really don't really want to be bothering with the tincture and you just want to stick with the powder. Um, you know, and also it's said that because the tincture really elevates the androgens, you know, like testosterone and DHEA and, you know, all of these kind of things, that it's specifically for men. Um, it's definitely true that it's very, very useful for men, especially men that are advancing beyond middle age. Uh, but men younger than that can still get some benefit from it in a smaller dose. Uh, men and women of varying ages and even you know quite young men and women can be experiencing you know issues with estrogen dominance and so you know taking something like a pine pollen tincture could be a part of a very successful strategy in restoring balance to the endocrine system you know so um, the tincture I mean I've worked with a number of women who have been using the tincture with you know a lot of really great results uh, the dose generally speaking is a lot lower than it would be for men some women would take you know maybe half a dropper a day uh, maybe every other day but they're definitely feeling some real significant benefits from doing that uh, but you know whatever if you're taking the tincture it's very very important that you take it properly because if you're not taking it properly then you're not really going to be getting the benefits from it uh, what you really mustn't do is just put it in your mouth and swallow it. You know, this is really not how you take pine pollen tincture at all. And unlike some other tinctures that you may kind of squirt into your blender or something and add it into smoothies or elixirs that you're making, you definitely don't want to do that with this. Uh, this needs to be squirted, whatever the dose, however often you're taking it, you need to take it in this way. You need to get the... 
you know, get however much you're taking, and you want to squirt it under your tongue, uh, because that's where, you know, you have capillaries under your tongue, and basically the, the pine pollen tincture is going to be absorbed into the capillaries straight into the bloodstream within, you know, a minute, say. So it can be w within like one or two minutes, two minutes at the most, that it would take the tincture to absorb straight into the bloodstream, and so you can have elevated androgens within a minute, really, realistically. But it has to be held under the tongue so that it can absorb into the capillaries for, for that amount of time. Ideally, you know, you want to hold it in your mouth for a couple of minutes just to be sure, then you can swallow it. So, you know, you've really, you know, th this is an absolute must for taking the tincture. So, underneath the tongue, and then you just hold it there for a minute or two, and then swallow it down. So the powder is actually, you know, much more accessible, it's much more easy to use. And so, you know, one super simple, super easy way to get this into your body is just take a teaspoon of it, or however much, however much you want really. The teaspoon's a good average measure. And then just add a little bit of water. The pine pollen just dissolves into the water so easily. That's pretty much it, it's dissolved already. And then just top it up. I mean, you, you know, you can make however much you like of this, a pint of this, a little glass like this, whatever. Ideally, I mean, you'll get the most benefit from doing this if you have it on an empty stomach, if you have it first thing in the morning would be good. So refreshing and absolutely delicious. And admittedly it is a taste that some people are not really that used to, you know, it may take you... No, it doesn't. It doesn't really take any getting used to. If, in my opinion, it's a very mild taste. It's a very nourishing taste. As soon as it hits your taste buds, you you know you know, you know on a cellular level that something really incredible is happening. Something else I really like to do, and again, you're going to want to ideally you know have this on either first thing in the morning or on an empty stomach at some point in the day, or at least leave it a while, you know, until you finish eating. I mean that really goes for pretty much all liquids that you're consuming, but something I really like to do is again just add, you know, a teaspoon to a cup. I mix in just a small little dash of water to turn it into a kind of, you know, pine pollen milk. And then just add some hot water, and I definitely don't need to boil this. Just heat it up on the stove until it's, you know, until there's steam rising. And then you have yourself an amazing pine pollen tea. Now you can add a sweetener to this if you wanted. You could, you know, you could mix it with other tonic herbal extracts and things like that, but really just on its own, it's an absolutely amazing cup of tea. So yeah, you know, the powder is extremely versatile, you can throw it into pretty much anything that you've got going on, you can put it in juices, smoothies, elixirs, really any recipe that you've, you know, that you've got happening. Um, something that I really like to do with it is, well, I've got one of these, and so I do encapsulate it. I mean, I encapsulate quite a lot of things, but this is really, really good for so many reasons. And obviously, if you're traveling, this is a ver much less messy way to travel with any, any kind of herbs or herbal powders. Um, and also, if you're traveling overseas, uh, if you're going through customs and you've got something encapsulated, customs generally tend to just leave it and they don't you know, they're not really so suspicious about it, you can say that it's medicine, that I need it. If you're going through customs with a loose powder or a bag 
of powder or a container of powder of some kind, it's very, very easy for customs to justify why they should take that off you and why they're suspicious of it. So encapsulating any, any herbal extracts or anything like that that you've got before you go traveling overseas is a you know, really, really good idea. Now another reason why I encapsulate this is because my son, who's four years old, uh, he's, you know, sometimes goes through phases of being really quite fussy at what he's willing to eat and what he's willing to take and all the rest of it. And, you know, he was really excited by pine pollen at some point and then, you know, he decided he didn't want to have it anymore. And, you know, he has this kind of on-off relationship with lots of different foods and herbs and things like that. But he's willing to take, you know, near enough anything if it's encapsulated. So, you know, this is a really great way if you've got like a fussy, temperamental kids, then, you know, you can ensure that they're getting the best possible nutrients into their bodies by doing something like this, you know, and it works a treat. So here's something else that I recently made with pine pollen. It's a pine pollen pancake that I actually made by soaking some oatmeal overnight in a, I think it was a gynostemma tea or a chaga tea or something like that, and then, you know, cooking it into a porridge and then adding to that porridge a couple of eggs and a couple of tablespoons of pine pollen and, you know, beating all that together and mixing it up and then using that as a batter to cook pancakes with, which is what you're looking at right now. Uh, it was absolutely delicious, totally amazing. Uh, I just sprinkled some fresh lemon juice on the top and a little bit of coconut palm sugar and that was just awesome. We, we ate quite a few of those that day. And so you can, you know, whether you're going to make pancakes with it or not, you can add it to your oatmeal or to porridge or something like that if you're eating that. Uh, traditionally in China, pine pollen powder was used as a flour and quite often it was mixed in with other flours that were being used, you know, for cooking and baking of various different types of food. So you can use it in that way. Uh, definitely it would be a very expensive uh, flour to use primarily so you, you want to be mixing it kind of you know uh, one-third pine pollen to two-thirds whatever else you're using if, if you're going to you know mix the flour together so that's a really good way of, of cooking with it uh, it's very very hardy it doesn't denature easily so you know you you can heat it up actually it's quite significantly it can be baked in the oven for quite a long time now aside from all the things that we've mentioned there are a couple of other things that you can do with pine pollen but normally the, these things would be best off done with freshly wild harvested pine pollen catkins and the fresh tips of the new branches, the tips that actually produce the catkins which produce the pollen. Um, now these parts of the tree, these pollen bearing parts of the tree have, have been used in fermentation for a very very long time and you know many different alcoholic beverages have been created using pine tips and pine pollen. Now, obviously pine ale is going to be uh, the, the most common form of uh, fermented alcoholic pine beverage, although even that's pretty scarcely available on the commercial market. Now another thing that you can do with the freshly harvested tips and the catkins is you can make a pine syrup with that and it's really really simple. I haven't done it yet but uh, you basically just use the the pine tips and the catkins and you infuse them into water and normally Traditionally, the recipe would uh, require you to add quite a lot of sugar into that. Um, I know a lot of people are really not up for that, so you could substitute that part of the recipe with like a birch-derived xylitol or, or something like that. Uh, a, a good tree-derived sugar would actually go quite well, I think. Um, and, you you know, you cook all of that up and then strain off the, the catkins and the pine tips and what you're left with is a really thick, syrupy, very sweet syrup, essentially, that really has an incredibly long shelf life. Apparently it lasts for, well, decades. Um, so, you know, neither of those two things I've actually made myself yet, personally. Uh, but those are two things that I'm definitely going to be 
experimenting with when the new pine pollen season comes around in early spring. So, you know, I'm well aware that there are innumerable other ways of working with pine pollen and using it on a daily basis. I'm aware that some of the things I've suggested in this video are, are kind of obvious and not new to some of you, but really this video is just a response to the surprising amount of questions that I've received wondering what to do with pine pollen beyond just throwing it into smoothies. So, you know, it's just, it's just so versatile. You don't need to just repeat the same action over and over again, day in, day out, of just putting a teaspoon of it in a smoothie or whatever. You know, there's so many different ways that you can use it. Uh, so hopefully that video has, you know, illuminated some very basic and simple ways that you can incorporate this into your daily routine. Um, and if you've got any other really interesting ways of working with pine pollen, any delicious recipes that you have, just stick them in the comments down below so that other people can benefit from that and try it out themselves.